I'm founder of the Innovitrium with the Juilliard School of Innovation. Uh, basically, if you look at my background, I've launched over 150 new products, you know, two that sold over a billion dollars. So, you know, it's really fun. I get to go around the, the planet and network with people and have my own personal brand. You will always see me with my ball cap on because I am the coach, Sherpa, or other things that I help other people develop their products. I'm not the star of the show. That would be you. So bottom line is I get to work on wicked cool projects. How many here would like to work on, uh, you know, electrical buses in China? You know, do you think that would be really cool? I got to work on electrical buses in China. Do you think the Chinese actually want to pollute the whole planet? No, they don't. You know, bottom line, they'd really like to have electrical buses to work, but how many people do they have? Hundreds of millions, you know, in the billion, one, I think 1.8 billion? So they got to move people around and make things happen. How about nanotechnology? You know, if you're part of Star Trek and you see those nanites, you know, and you know, the Borg were running around, did you know that actually we have nanites right now on this planet that can uh, cure colon cancer? Why is that important to me? My wife had colon cancer. Well, she actually survived it, wonderful. Now, it hasn't gone to human trials yet, but it's in, it's in the animal phase. So they call it phase one trials. So I got to do that. So wouldn't you like to be able to market that? Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing to market and go sell? How about the largest solar array done by uh, Florida Power and Light? I walked in one day, and here we're doing a workshop on how to make the largest solar array work. And they were struggling. There was Florida Power and Light, and then there was the government. And the government said, we have rules how power plants really should work. And they said, what you do is they must withstand 180 mile an hour winds. Remember, we've seen this last week, the hurricanes came in. You know, do you think glass is gonna really withstand 180 mile an hour winds? So we actually had to change the law. And lo and behold, in Martin County, Florida, Florida Power and Light has the largest solar array that's powering the planet. And finally, Gerber graduates. Back in 1990, who here which caught, was born after 1990, right? So basically, you, I was able to feed 73% of all babies a healthier food. What was happening in 1990 when we were doing this and, and looking at this uh, basically was that, uh, you know, I said, okay, after mother's milk formula and baby food, where do babies go? Because my CEO walked in and said, John, you're in charge of marketing. You have to get a 10% growth. And I said, I have a 63 share of baby food in the United States. I'm Gerber, right? He goes, not my problem. So I asked the next question, well, where do they go? Where do they go? And they, everybody knew everything. We had 32,000 so sources for baby information. So we're kind of big data back before big data was, was not in all in vogue. And bottom line is we, bottom line, we looked at it and we said, the number one thing they ate, what do you think toddlers ate after baby food, formula, and mother's milk? D give me any guesses. What do you think they ate? Cheerios. Cheerios number three. Very good. Anybody else? Give me another one. Carrots, with the, it was off the list. They, they say they eat healthy, but we don't. Mush? What? I, French fries, number one. French fries, number one. Number two, uh, but number two, crab macaroni and cheese. Number three, Cheerios. Number four, spaghetti, SpaghettiOs. Number five, you know, applesauce. So it was a healthy, happy meal. So I launched a healthy, happy meal, got out there, and I lost $5 million. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm going to be fired. You know, uh, by the way, I didn't launch it. This is one smart thing for all marketers here. Don't launch it in New York, Chicago, or LA, because you will be fired. I launched it in Des Moines, Iowa. Yay, so nobody knew. We just took it back in. <laughs> so bottom line is, we, we got in, and we, we were looking at it, and we said, oh. You know, we said, Mobs, you told us in all, the, in all these uh, studies that, you know, this was really what you wanted. And they said, yeah, but we don't want to teach them to go to McDonald's. So I took it out of the box, and it sold $2 billion. So to me, it's all about, you know, it's all about creating your personal brand. Mine, you can see, I was a microbiologist, nutritional chemist, food technologist, and since I'm a wonk in new products and marketing for entrepreneurs and innovation. So what's your personal brand? When you're looking at LinkedIn, you're creating your brand image. So everyone, you know, I want you to look to your left, and I want you to look to your right, right? That's your competition when you graduate. How are you going to have a point of difference? You know, everybody on their team is really smart, you're really good. You know, don't tell me how hardworking and pretty you are. Tell me, what makes you you? What makes you you? What is your superpower? So why should we care about LinkedIn? Why should we care about this at all? You know, basically, how many people want to have a really, you know, be, make, get a lot of money on their job, 
or start their own business. Anybody want to really have a high income when they come out of here? Well, you know, if you don't create your brand, why should I pay you? So if I can't answer, so what, why you, what's your, what's your value proposition? Aren't we marketers and salespeople? What's your value prop, right? So did you know 94% of all recruiters looked at your LinkedIn profile? 94%. I don't even know the 6% that don't. 94%. These are not my numbers. These come from, from uh, you know, statistics that come from the HR companies and LinkedIn themselves. 94%. Would you, did you know it's as important or more important than your resume? Have you spent as much time on your LinkedIn as you have on your resume? How many people have a fantastic LinkedIn profile? How many people have fantastic, right? So to me, it's all about, you know, how do you create awareness? How do you create awareness? You know, a person can't buy, a person can't, even when you're selling, can't buy if they're not aware of you. So how do you create awareness? So for me, how many people have 200 people in their LinkedIn community? How many have 500? How many have 1,000? I have 1,600. And oh, by the way, 33 CEOs and 250 senior vice presidents, but I also have 500 students. You know, and do you think people are looking for you? I talk to CEOs every day and they tell me, we need to find the right students. We want to hire. We want to hire you. We don't really care about the, we care about the grade point and we care about some of these other things, but can they hit the ball? Have they, what have they actually accomplished? You know, how do they handle the high pressure of the business I'm going to put them in? So how do you tell your story? How do you say, so what, why you? You know, it's the toughest thing, you know, if you're not aware, you know, how can they help you? How can I even, you know, make a recommendation? At the end of this presentation, if you have a absolutely professional LinkedIn profile and you send me a link, I'll be happy to add you to my, basically to my community. So let's, let's, have, let's have some fun with this. What I'd like you to do is on your phone, computer or otherwise, type your own name. Pull up Google, type your own name. Okay, has everybody got their own name in? Okay, how many came in up as the first listing? Okay, we have, we have anybody who hasn't, we got some work to do. We got some serious work to do. Now, I'd like you to do is type my name in and then click on it. So how are you going to create your brand? This isn't about me, this is about you. My brand is I'm a marketer, innovator, and educator. So, and I say making innovation happen. Three words, right to the point. So to me, you know, what is yours? I want you to think about this. And the first paragraph should talk to you, to you about what you've actually accomplished. And we're gonna actually go through this because I actually work with LinkedIn. I presented in the New York office and some of these slides are from the New York office uh, of LinkedIn. So I did a, a, a program with Prudential. So again, make sure when you click on it, do I come up first? Always, right? And I'm a CPI, what does that mean? That's a certified professional innovator. So that's what I do for a living. So you automatically know I'm a certified professional innovator that, has, that helps, makes, innovation happen. I'm not the airy-fairy person. I'm not the theoretical person. I'm not the one, you know, I'm not an, an academic. I'm a practitioner. I actually make it happen. That's what I do. So what's yours? Does it work? Well, you know, I have 14,780 connections at the University of Wisconsin Whitewater, the largest business school in Wisconsin. I'm number two uh, is, is a power profile. But I also help out my brother who teaches at the University of Michigan, and I'm in, the, you know, I'm in 60 out of 25,000. Do you think that's important to finding a job? Yeah. Do you think if it's important to make a connection and, and providing content? Because it really isn't all about just the job. It's why should I listen to you? Why should I follow you? What makes you unique? What, what makes you uniquely you? What is your superpower? I want you to think about this. You know, the reason you get jobs and you, and you do well in your career is you have a superpower. Everyone does. It's not where you went to school. And it's not what your grade point is, but it's something that's uniquely you. For me, I told you I did 150 new products. 
Well, I started as a sausage stuffer in a meat plant, so I knew how meat was made. Then I became a microbiologist, nutritional chemist, and food technologist, and suddenly I've launched over 100 food products. Is that surprising? Because I knew a lot about food. And I started, boy, it was a really fun job, lifting 100,000 pounds a day in that meat plant and stuffing that you know, sausage out, out the other side. I wouldn't recommend it for most people, but boy, did I learn how food was made. So I want you to take a minute, and I want you to write down, what's your superpower? I'll give you another example. My son, you know, he writes a copy and is at an agency for Ralston Perina. Well, he had great grades, and he was trying to find a job, and was really struggling because, you know, his, he was a, a photojournalist, and that's kind of a hard field to find a job in. And all of a sudden, he, he goes and says, he goes to a place and, and says, you know, I was in 4-H since I was in th uh, three years old. I won the state twice in 4-H, which caught in photography, and they just, who are they looking for? He didn't know who they were looking for. They were looking for a, a copywriter for Ralston Perina horse business. And wah, wah, that's his superpower. Now, you, you, I want you to take a minute and think about yours. Write yours down. What you make, like, you know, did you, know, did you come from the country? Do you like cars? Are you really great, great at technology? What's your superpower? You know, it could be, you know, you heard your mom and dad talk about this, and you were bored to death about it, but bottom line is you know a little bit about it because you heard it for 10 years. So what's your superpower? Write down your superpower. That's what I want you to do. Write down your superpower. Take a minute. Now let me give you a real example. Here we are, we're at an AMA conference. And I, you know, I put this slide in for the Whitewater students because I said, you know, you know, you write on your resume and you write in LinkedIn, I'm an AMA member. You know, that's like saying, you know, if you're at Whitewater, that's like saying that uh, you play baseball, but you forgot to tell them you play baseball for the Yankees. So when you say AMA, it's how, you were at the sales competition. You actually went and did all these things. That's part of the story, isn't it? Right? It's not just that you're an AMA member, what did you do? So if I'm looking at your profile LinkedIn, why should I be interested in you? You actually had enough guts to get up and come here and compete. Tell your story. I always tell the Whitewater students they've won the Nationals 10 out of the last 15 years. You're not only on playing baseball, you're playing baseball for the Yankees. You know? And how did you play baseball? And what goals and what things did you do to make AMA better? In each one of your chapters, I'm sure you have a role to play, otherwise you wouldn't be here. So what role did you play? How did you make it better, quicker, faster, higher? That's part of your superpower. Does that make sense? So, you know, to me, when you're building your brand, it's basically, what is your unique proposition? So what, why you? When I walk in and I had 300 resumes sitting on my desk when I was senior vice president, I'm gonna give you a grand total of about 15 seconds to look at your resume. If I don't know, so what, why you, you go in the trash. So what, so it's like 1,001, 1,000, count to 15, and figure how long that is. So what's your thing? Who is your target? This is marketing. It's selling. It's no different. Who's your target? Don't tell me I just want a really good job. No, you don't. You want a certain industry. You want to be in a certain role. You want, you know, it's demographic psychographics. Where do you want to work? Who's your target? And marketing and sales, you always start with the customer or the consumer and work backwards. What do they want? Not what you want. What do they want and how do you fill that role? What's your headline? What three words best describe you? It doesn't have to be just three words like mine, but what if I looked at it at a glance, when I say marketer, innovator, educator, you know exactly what I do. So what are you gonna do? Right, three simple words, right? And how do you position yourself? Now positioning is really simple. What problem are you gonna solve for? Me, not for you, for me. So if I'm HR, what do I want? Real question, what do I want if I'm HR? You come in and you're talking to an HR person, it doesn't care what the business is, what do you want if you're HR? What do you want? If you're gonna talk to me and I'm head of HR. I talk to heads of HR all over the planet because I do training. What would you want? If it was you and you were hiring, what would you want? You want results? Yeah, you do. You want somebody who's qualified, but what else? Motivated. Motivated. You want somebody who's actually going to help the team, right? What else? Great value. Great value for the company. For the company. 
right? So they're going to create value. Not just be here, but you're going to create value for our company. What else? Yes? Be personable. Do you like to work with grumpy people? I, you know, I look at pictures, you know, people put their profile up on LinkedIn, and they're like, they're looking mean. Do I want to hire a mean-looking person? Why would I do that? I have a happy team. I'm trying to motivate them, trying to get them to take that next step. Oh, by the way, something that you don't think about? Think that you don't think about? I want them to show up every day. Every day. So make sure whenever you do your profile, you talk about, hey, you're ready to go every day, anywhere, any place, any time. You know, one of the things that would kill me as, as a senior vice president is the CEO, CEO or CEO would come to me and say, John, here's my speech, and it's 6 o'clock, the day before the national sales meeting, and there's 600 people showing up. And I have to turn to my team and I say, I'm really sorry, but we're working to 1 in the morning. Right? We're working 1 because we didn't get the thing, and it's got to go in everybody's packet, and we have to produce it, make it look nice, and get it out the door. And if you complain, you're off my team. That quick. Because if I'm going to be here to one, and I'm senior vice president, you better be here to one. Does that make sense? So it's attitude. If I'm head of sales, I want you to prove that you've been able to sell something. Are you going to help me hit my quota, my number? How are you going to make that happen? You know, and finally, you know, what's your logo? If this is a brand, and it is, what's your logo? What's your logo? Question. Your face. So how is it different? You want to look professional. That's definitely important. But are, you know, do you want to look exactly like everyone else? If I got 300 of these on my desk, right? Or I'm flipping through LinkedIn because you can't put a picture on resume here in the United States. You can in Europe. But bottom line is, so, you know, your logo. So look professional. Not, not everybody has money for professional photography. I understand. I actually posted, you know, seven steps to have... Uh, your, uh, use your camera to have your, uh, basically your picture look as professional as possible. It's okay to use the camera, just follow the seven steps. Good lighting, where, what's your background, all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? So let's keep going. When you're on LinkedIn, it's all about telling a story. It's just storytelling. It's no more. It's simply, I'm flipping through. I'm only going to take a few seconds. So the first thing is, why should I listen to you? When I'm senior vice president, how many, how many presentations do you think I saw in a day, on average? There's eight hours in a day. How many do you think, as a senior vice president, I saw every day presentations from people in my teams? I had 45 sales rep. I had 60 people in the call center. Plus, I had 80 stores. How many presentations do I have in a day? 80? Not that many, but I had 13. I had 13. 80. Whew, I wish I was that fast. I'm not, you know, you're hired, you're fired, blah, blah, blah. No, not, not quite that way, almost. But what's in it for me? So LinkedIn, if you don't know the target, then how do you know what's in it for me? Me, the viewer, what's in it for me? So you have to understand what's in it for you. And what's the three most important things you need to know? Not 23, not 15, what three things are in your superpower that I should care about that I want to hire you, or that I want you to be part of my community, because it's more important to get in my community, actually, than getting hired, because once you're in the community, you have a lot of options. So again, what's your story? What are the three things? And then you ask for the order. So again, I want you to take five minutes. We're going to do a 45-second elevator pitch. I want you to write down your three ideas, right? And, you know, which call, then I want you to pitch it to the person next to you. So 45 seconds, what's your brand? The three words that are yours, and what's your tagline? Not too complicated. We're going to take a couple seconds. And remember, 70 to 80% of the jobs start in social media. And if you haven't figured it out, 80% of the jobs don't even get posted. So if you're not in the community, you're not going to be on the game. So let's go take, take a person next to you, behind you, around you. <coughs> write down your three words and your tagline. So what's your value prop? Don't think too hard. It should come to the top of your head. What do you like to do?
Okay. Whatever you have, you have. What I'd like you to do is take your partner and do the pitch, 45 seconds. And the partner, I'd like you to give them possible improvement points for this one. Ready, set, let's go. You got yours? I had my two things. It's fine. I like to draw. Uh, and it means that like, I'm good at visualizing, and that's why it's perfect for me to as an accountant, because I know the data, and I can interpret it and explain it to you, not like in a really complicated, but in a simple way, so you can understand the numbers. The second thing, I like to play chess. It's one of my hobbies. So I like to be strategic. That's because, because you make complicated things simple. Which caught, but you're very strategic oriented. And then you'd have to give an example. Okay. Okay. So hopefully you have the start and the inkling. This is only at five minutes. But I really want you to think about this. So now let's go in. Now let's build your LinkedIn profile. Let's now go through the how to. This is from Jason Hammer, the New York office, I told you. I actually got to present in the Empire State Building, which was kind of cool, to Prudential Retirement. So why do I think you know, LinkedIn is so important? It's network, network, network. When I, it's not about finding a job. It's participating in a community because I'm gonna look in my community for innovation leaders if I'm hiring for innovation. I'm gonna look in my community if I'm looking for HR. I'm gonna look in my community if I'm looking for salespeople. So again, it's all about your network, but if you don't have awareness and you aren't contributing and you aren't there, you come at the end, let's say you have a great internship and you don't participate all year, and then you say, I'd like a job at the end. Well, they don't know you because you just did whatever you did. How did you network? So not only does it work on LinkedIn, it works when you're at a business too. How big is your network? Network, network, network. You know, if you think LinkedIn isn't important, you know, let's say, you know, who, would, who doesn't want to have 450 million business professionals that you could actually reach? <coughs> 450 million professionals, by the way, in every country around the world. In every country, two new members every sec, you know, every second. Two new members every second. Right now, there's a personal and a professional. On my personal, you know, which is Facebook, you're gonna see my grandkids in pumpkin patches. I love them, they're wonderful, right? I'm not ashamed of showing that to anyone. Matter of fact, don't ask me because I'll take up 10 minutes of your time, right? But then there's my professional side, which is my LinkedIn side. However, whenever I hired anybody, and I hired hundreds, is I would always look at both. So if you have that funny drinking picture, you know, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you pull it down because if I saw that, you're gone. You're out of my list. I got 300 people that I could hire besides you. Why would I worry about you, right? So make sure that, you know, I always say if it's something that you would be proud to show your parents, and my parents are 82 now, so, but I still look at it that way. Would you really wanna go and show them anything? And if you don't have that on either LinkedIn or Facebook, take it down. So number two, let's optimize the profile. So this is a basic profile on LinkedIn. So what do we, we want to look at? You know, you've got, you say, okay, we want to have a professional name, headline, and optimize the industry or location you're in. Now those here in Whitewater, do you really think this is the Chicago area? Does anybody think this is the Chicago area? Do you know on LinkedIn it's listed as the greater Chicago area and on my LinkedIn profile it says greater Chicago area. Can I be downtown Chicago an hour and a half? I can. Is anybody gonna push back? Oh, somebody, a client comes to me and says, John, can you come to Chicago uh, tomorrow at eight o'clock, okay? I'll be there. Does that make sense? So understand location, and not your definition of location, but LinkedIn's definition of location. You know, look at your, you know, your photo, again. So what, why you? Customize your URL. Expand on your headline. Mine's making innovation happen. What's yours? What's yours? Right? And show, don't tell, show examples of your work. Show examples. 
Before the age of 50, I always had a portfolio with me to show people the marketing and sales work that I did. I never lost an interview, ever, because I could show you what I did and then I'd turn in how I'd help your firm do that. Did I take all those you know, jobs? No, I didn't. Some didn't fit me. But bottom line, LinkedIn now has everything digitized. If you had a great you know, project that you want to put up, put it up. If you have an award, put it up. Because we're meant to be visual. Executives have no time, zero time. I, you know, I start my day the same way I always did. I start at 5 a.m. and I finish about 10 p.m. every day. And that's my normal day. I get up and I'm running right from the beginning and I go all the way to 10 o'clock. And only, I used to go longer, but I'm getting older. So bottom line is, is I don't have time to read everything you send me. So I want visuals. I want to see, see that work that you did. If you've done it, we all have done some really great stuff. Manage your endorsements. I always tell you, oh, I'm the innovation guy. Actually, all my colleagues tell me I'm a strategist. So again, understand what is your superpower? How, you know, and, and manage those. <clears throat> you know, if you got some great scores, if you got a patent, a certification, you volunteered for something, put it up. You know, for me, I was a, you know, I basically, I was senior vice president, but I also worked with the 4-H uh, horse console. So if somebody put, hey, I'm an active member of 4-H, and it came across my desk, it's maybe if everything else was equal, that might be a tiebreaker. Because, you know, I want to support people because I know what 4-H stands for. You know, you're an AMA, put it on there. Tell them how you participate, because you might be talking to another AMA person. Does that make sense? So that's what you really want to do. You know, and make yourself contactable. I know everyone here likes to text, you know, and at the very, at least, you know, email, but us boomers want phone numbers. If I want to hire, I don't want to wait and text you and wait for you to return my text. I don't want to send you an email and hope in a day. I'm a busy person. I'm going to pick up the phone and say, are you interested, yes or no? So if you don't have a phone number and you don't respond immediately to phones, you know, this is one time you need to. So make sure you're contactable. You know, but here's where people get it wrong on LinkedIn. It's about content. I'm a business person. What would I want to listen to you, anyone here in the room about? Would I want you to give me advice on business? No. What would I want you to give me advice on? Because I would want you to give me advice. Where to go to eat. Where to go to eat if I was in your town. Yeah. Right? My favorite question is, don't tell me, you know, I ask people where to go to eat. You know, and then they'll give me the really expensive restaurant, and then I ask them, where do they go eat? Mm -hmm. Ask the right question, right? It's important. So definitely, you know, where do you eat? What else? What else would I want to know from you? What else? What don't I have knowledge of? What? What you're, who's interested in? Right? You're interested. Do I know you're an expert on you? So you're a millennial. Do, do business people understand millennials? Not even close. I've done three projects for them trying to understand how millennials work. If you see a great article about millennials, you don't have to write the article, but you, if you make some very intelligent comments, you're going to move the ball considerably in your court. And if you participate in my community and you're talking about millennials, now I have a position open that's looking for how to market to millennials, you're in. Does that make sense? And every, sometimes it's technology, sometimes it's social media, whatever you're really great at, because we're not. There are certain things we're great at and there are certain things that you would be great at. Figure that out. If you do, you're seven times more likely to view, been viewed than just a resume kind of look. Seven times more likely. Who doesn't want to be seven times more likely picked out from LinkedIn? Anybody not want to be seven times more likely? Anybody would not want to be seven times more likely, right? Then it's about knowledge and, and, your, you know, and your professional publishing. If you look at this, uh, you know, I put these up on SlideShare. So after this uh, AMA meeting, it'll be on SlideShare. So you can actually have these slides because I want to share to the, my community. You're part of my community. I'm part of AMA. I'm an advisor, right? Groups, you know, I love to, I'm in 45 different groups and we'll go through that. Do I participate actively in all? No. Do I actively participate in about five? Yes. So pick yours. How many people in LinkedIn here are in a group? You know, make sure it's in your industry that's something that you really want to do. Then a pulse. I just did a study 
I looked at 1,400 LinkedIn profiles from CEOs, COOs, you know, and guess what? Do you know that you can find out what they're interested in? You can find out what blogs they read. You can find out, you know, who they follow. So not only can you use it for yourself, you're going to go to that company, you can find out what the latest press release is, what they're following, what's hot, what's not. So you come in and you are more than prepared. You're more than prepared. And Pulse does this. See, I ask CEOs, what do they read? They basically customize their Pulse. And of course, it's the Wall Street Journal, Harvard Business Review, the standard stuff, Forbes, Fortune, whatever, right? But they put it on Pulse. It's all electronic. And where do they see it? Where do they look at? Where would I even look at your resume if I, if today if I was hiring? Where would I, would I look at it in my office? No, where would I look at it? My phone, exactly correct. Because when am I, when's my downtime? I'm waiting for that next airline to go out in two hours. I'm sitting there, you know, I could boot my laptop up, but if I've got a good phone, I'm gonna be looking at it on the phone. So how is your information look like on a mobile device? Do you think that's gonna increase or decrease? So by the time anybody here gets out, it's not only going to be important, it's going to be really important. And then find influencers. So let's go through this. How do you engage groups? So again, you know, if you engage groups, again, you're four times more likely to be found. So content, seven times. You know, you know groups, four times. So make sure you get in as many groups as you can and contribute in a positive manner. And I'll repeat this, nobody wants to hear about the negatives. If somebody in your group is negative, block them, kick them out. I do it. So when I say that you'll get in my group, the only one rule I have, be professional, and if you're negative, you're gone. And I don't think you want to be enemies in my group. So bottom line is be positive. Be a positive contributor. We hear all the no, no, no's every day. Our CFO, there's, you know, the employee complains, the customer isn't right. Whatever, be positive because we want positive influences. You know, find insight here from you know people you follow. That person in the middle is my brother. You know, he only has 166,000 followers. So wouldn't you like to have that? You know, goes around the world, speaks for $15,000 a speech. So bottom line is follow people and then copy them and make them your own. In other words, I always say scour the world Steal the best and make it your own. That doesn't mean you're plagiarizing. Somebody's been successful, there's a reason for it. Copy them, then make it you, because you gotta put your personal brand on it. Does that make sense? So again, don't start from scratch. Find somebody that's a rock star. So if we start looking at this, let's take a look at some of these. You know, here's some key influencers that you, you, you like to look at. Or, you know, and, and then obviously on a, on, a, on a publishing platform, share your insights. I forward a lot of other people's information from For Forbes or you know, Entrepreneurial Magazine, but I put my own insights on them. And suddenly I have 1,600 followers. It's amazing how that works. Sharing versus publishing. Sharing goes on and you're part of it and it goes out to your community. Publishing stays with you forever. Let me repeat this. Publishing stays with you forever. So number one, only publish really good stuff. Number two, don't share too much because I'm really busy. I want you in my community, but I don't want to hear about you every day all the time. Sorry, it's nice, you're really good. I'm sure you're gonna be a super executive someday. But bottom line is understand the difference. You know, it becomes part of your profile. It is there forever, it's shared with your network and it reaches all those professionals. But what do you write about? What do you write about? Only write about things you know. I can spot a phony from a mile away. Write about something you know, an observation, something you've read, something that you've participated in. Only about things you know. It could be 4-H horses, who knows? But if it's relevant in an industry, it makes sense. You know, choose images that stand out. We are meant to be visual. Do clip art, but cite it. Pick the art, there's a lot of places we'll talk here later, like Flickr, that you can get it, you can do YouTubes, and then make comments about them. You don't have to do all the original content. You can have a really rich and robust LinkedIn profile, and you didn't invent anything. You just 
made really insightful comments on everything. So you find the perfect thing, but you always cite it. Because again, if you don't cite it, they're gonna view you as ripping it off from someone else. And would I wanna hire somebody who rips things off? The answer is no, right? So, but be authentic. Be yourself, and you know, give me some insight that's uniquely you. And you, and you think about this, you know, if we, we, you live in whatever part of your country uh, that you come from, you know, we don't have the same insights. If you're from Utah, or you're from Florida, or you're from Wisconsin, there's different insights. You know, be yourself, be authentic. Would I want to know what's going on in Utah? I would. Would I want to know what's going on in Florida? I would, because it wouldn't be natural for me to find that out here in Wisconsin. And do I really want to get on a plane train and go down there and visit what I used to do? Because I had stores all over the country. I'd rather just have you give me some insights and then I'll maybe check half as much as I used to. Does that make sense? So again, make sure you share your posts and they get read. That's what really makes you move up. Now, in this, you know, LinkedIn is even getting into selling. Right now, LinkedIn has the new product called Sales Navigator. And this is the keys to social selling. Create a professional uh, brand. Well, sound familiar what I said earlier? You know, find the right people. So not only can you be part of their group, you can sell to them. Do you think that would be important if you're a salesperson? You know, and, you know engage in insights. If I'm a buyer and I'm buying over 10,000, I'm looking for somebody who's smarter than I am in a certain segment or, or reality. And I'm looking, who's gonna be an expert at this? Because I don't have time for people who aren't experts. So where's your insights? And then build strong relationships in your community. So whether you're doing it for a job or you're doing it for yourself or you're gonna get that first sales job, social selling matters. Does that make sense? So here are my simple, 10 simple rules. And these are simple rules. And I, I encourage you, highly encourage you to, to do this every day. Number one, take 10 minutes a day on LinkedIn. Not 20 minutes, not 15, just 10. Number two, what I want you to do is, is keep it fresh. You know, how many people like to go to old websites that haven't changed their content, you know, for six months? You know, so why would I want to see yours? You know, if you've already applied for a job and it's the same six months later, what's new about you, right? So keep it fresh. Invite anyone you met yesterday to your community. But the one rule is they may be positive. Now, here we have all these people in this room. If, if we just gathered up everybody's cards and you say, why would I invite everybody in this room? How many people do, you know, know who's, who their mom and dads are, who their uncles or aunts are, who their grandparents are? They might actually have an introduction for you. Not this year, maybe not even next. But two or three years from now, wouldn't that be a nice thing to have? Oh, I met this person at the UWW you know, AMA conference here in, in Whitewater, Wisconsin. They're a good person. And that's all you need. And then it's up to you to t walk through the door. Does that make sense? So again, 10 minutes, who you met yesterday. Why does it have to be yesterday? Why does it have to be yesterday, not two days? I won't remember. It's fresh and I won't remember. I'm sorry, I see hundreds of people. I try to remember as many names as I can, but I really won't do it. Bottom line, however, if I saw you yesterday, we had a little conversation, you sent me a note, I'm gonna remember you, right? If they're not professional, if you have negative people in your, in your group, get rid of them. Get rid of them now, right? You know, turn off the button. There's a button on LinkedIn that's on the right-hand side that says, every time I update, send a note to my friends. Turn it off, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. I had one young lady, I was really trying to help her get a really great job, and she did 42 updates in one evening, which went to my community. Regrettably, I had to drop her from my community. It's sad, it wasn't that, that you know, she just didn't look and see what she was doing. So make sure you turn it off, right? Get involved with the community. Post great you know, content, but people's time is extremely valuable. Be picky, be insightful. You know, I don't like somebody who sends me stuff every day. Look at somebody you think is great and copy their template. Find somebody that you admire and copy their template, then make it your own. Because there's some reason that they've been successful. And sometimes you don't always understand why. And I'll use a really silly example. My sons were in 4-H and I'm writing 
and I'm walking around and, and I suddenly realized people who had dark hats, dark chaps and dark boots on were winning more than people who didn't have black hats, black chaps and black hats. So I thought, oh, it's a trend. It's a trend and we need to be black. So I bought black chaps, black boots and black hats and we started winning more. And then I suddenly realized the difference was there's 29 horses going around in a ring and black on black you can't see the feet move and you're judged on how much you move your feet. So it was a perceptual difference. I didn't know, we started winning, but then you figure it out. Does that make sense? Now, I know that's a silly example, but if it works for horses, it can work on LinkedIn. You know, and join companies, follow companies, follow companies, follow companies that you are interested in. Not two weeks before you have the interview. Follow them now. That way, when you're prepping, you don't have to work that hard at it. Does that make sense? You'll understand it. And by the way, you might determine you don't want to work there. That's okay, too. You know, I, I, one of my favorite clients is GE. I work with them. I call it 300,000 people, but a different 300,000 people than three years ago. They pay phenomenally well. They're the best in the world, but they are under the gun every second of every day. Do you want that environment? If you want to get paid huge money, it's great. Absolutely, they're my client, I love them. On the other side, not everybody's made for that. Make sure you follow and understand. So again, LinkedIn has tons and tons of resources. Help LinkedIn, they will help you and go do this. They're committed to do it because they're the professional network and they want to remain so. And the way they do that is get more millennials into their system. Does that make sense? So not only do they, 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 they can help you, they need you. So make sure that you use those resources. And if you haven't already, build your own community. Build your own LinkedIn community. Invite your present members, because you don't know who their mom or dad is, or their nephew or niece, or professor, right? Not only that, but uh, how about alumni? Would you like, you know, to me at, my, at the universities that I went, if somebody said, hey, would you join my LinkedIn community? I'd be more than happy to. So now you've got a whole nother plethora. How many people have gone through AMA chapters at your college for the last 10 years? Wouldn't you like to have them in your network when you're looking for a job? Create a community. Is it hard? It takes about 10 minutes. But ask every member of your group to join it because immediately you have breadth. Does that make sense? Everybody understand what we're saying? So I want to wrap this up. This was really short. I always, can you tell, I love what I do. You know, join, you know, join me at the end of Atrium. You know, we're the Juilliard School of Innovation. And I want to thank you. And as I said, if you have a professional LinkedIn profile and that you would like to join mine, and then as over time, you know, you'd post some really great stuff, I'd be happy to make introductions. I do it all the time. So again, I want to thank you. And do we have any questions? Any questions? You had mentioned earlier that uh, that there were you know there were two sides to this point. There was the professional LinkedIn position, and then there was the, uh, the social media. Yeah, Facebook. That side. Yep. Would you consider it a negative if there was not really a president a presence in the uh, Facebook side of social media? Like, I I would because I would think there was something wrong with you. Really? Um, no offense, because millennials you know are are social butterflies, and that's a boomer speaking. Um, however, it doesn't have to be a big presence because I'm going to say, because my question is if, if you didn't have one, I'd say why? And that's going to be an interview question. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you present there? Is there something you're ashamed of that you hid? You know, see what I'm saying? Well, yeah. I'm, I'm being really candid as a senior vice president. That's the way I would look at it. Okay. Right, thank you. It doesn't have to be a bunch and stuff. Yes. Would you recommend investing in LinkedIn premium? It depends on where you are. At the first, no. When you get out in a business situation, you're in sales, yes. If you're in marketing, yes. So when you're starting out, you don't need professional. You know, what happens is it gives you more information on the customer and the clientele. So if I'm selling or marketing, it's really important. Not so much when you start. Sounds good, thank you. Thanks. Um, this would be kind of a vague question, but what would be an appropriate or an inappropriate headline? You know, you know appropriate, appropriate headlines would be what's in it for me, me, who, whoever your target is. 
Inappropriate is something that would be offensive to me. Like? So, well, you know, to me, uh, you could be bragging too much. I'm wonderful and super powered. And I'm like, I don't believe you. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. On the other side, um, I've, uh, a great headline is I've been a successful in sales competition. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I am a, you know, I, I want to be a professional salesperson. So, so does that make sense? Yeah. So it has to be realistic, but it, it really varies by who the target is. So think about who's going to read this. Who's your target? Now, I know it may be early in some of your careers and you don't have that target yet, but you probably have an inkling of the kind of industries you'd like to work at. You know, and if nothing else, join those groups to that point and follow them because you'll learn. You know, you know everyone says, uh, I'd like to go and, and work at Google. Okay, Larry Page was a student of my brother's at Michigan. So I can actually look at you and say the models I teach here about competing values is what he uses. But you know, some of that stuff is you better be the best world's algorithm person, otherwise you're not going to Google. Matter of fact, when you used to be in San Francisco as you went down the hill, there was this billboard and it had this equation. And I'm sitting there with my brother, my sister-in-law, who's Hokkien Chinese and had a perfect GRE score in me. We can't figure it out, she can. <laughs> She figures it out and says, it's, it's the number of digits is a phone number. So, of course, we're not real shy people. Call it. So she calls it and says, Google, we're hiring. <laughs> Thank okay. you. I appreciate yeah, that. You're welcome. <laughs> yes? Um, my question is just, this might sound silly because I know the importance of networking, but would you recommend adding everybody who requests you? Because sometimes I get requests and I have no idea who they are. It depends. I always check it out. Um, there are people who are there only to sell you something. Mm -hmm. If you go look at their profile and they don't have anything, or they, it, they, they're clearly a salesperson, broom them. If they're, if, uh, but you know, again, I tend to be more open most of the time. I've been burned a couple times, to be candid, but I just block them and move on. All right. Thanks. Okay? Yep. Yes? How do you, how do you keep your like your professional side and your like personal side kind of on your social media. So like, I'm not talking about, I mean, don't post, you know, like drunk pictures and like things like that, but you know, like just like on Facebook, how would you show that you're professional and you're looking for like Well, in fa at Facebook, I, I keep them in separate buckets for me. So to me, I always, you know, I say, if you want to look at my Facebook, it's about my family, which it is. I'm a grandfather. So it's all about that. So I focus everyone on my LinkedIn side. Some people like to be professional on both sides. But it causes confusion to me because you know, you're gonna wanna show Thanksgiving dinner with whoever you had it or Christmas or whatever. And that's why I always move everybody to Facebook. So I don't work the Facebook side, which caught on a business to business piece. I only do that, you know, I do Facebook strictly as my, it's basically my family. Now, there are businesses, because it's business to consumer, that might want to do Facebook and in a professional way, and that's fine. You see what I'm saying? You have to draw the line. What are you going to be? You can either be both professional or one personal and one professional. I tend to say it's too much work to do two, so I do one. So keep separate? Keep, I keep them separate. separate. Profiles for us? Okay. But that's me. I mean, everybody, I always say, don't let me walk with my dirty shoes and your clean mind. You know, if you have a really good reason, it makes sense. Yes. How much do you value endorsements on LinkedIn? Because anybody could get their friends to just click a button and say they're good at something. Well, to me, you know, endorsements are one of those things where they're nice to have, but I'm a little jaundice on them. So I get as many as I can, to be candid. Okay. Um, uh, but but I don't put a whole lot of stock in it. Okay. So to, so to me, I'm look I'm more looking at what you know. Are you participating in this blog? Are you following this company? Because it's going to show up. Thank okay. you. Anybody else? Well, I want to thank you again for coming. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot.